Um, I'm joining you from whatever own country. Um, I'm near Geelong today and I acknowledge the elders past, present and emerging and thank them, they, them for their care of the land, seas and waterways of um, this very beautiful part of the world. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a tag team today. So, um, so my role is in the library. So I'm in a new role, I'm expert searching and consultancy services lead. And I'll be sharing, um, sharing presenting with Alan, who's um, general manager of um, software engineering for the Artificial Intelligence um, Institute at Deakin, um, at, also at Deakin. Um, and basically, this is a, um, almost a, a, well, this is an update session because um, Professor Craig Olson actually presented this as a keynote um, back in 2020. So um, it was probably one of those last um, in-person events just before um, the pandemic hit and we, we went into lockdowns. So this is a little bit of a, you know, what, what's changed with the Living Knowledge System um, since then, which is quite a lot. Okay, so um, firstly, I just thought I'd touch very briefly on what's a living review. And many of you will already be familiar with living reviews, but for those who aren't, it's a, it's a newer type of um, evidence synthesis that's emerged over more recent years. And um, Cochrane living systematic reviews are described as continually updated systematic reviews. So what this means is basically regular, so perhaps monthly searches, um, so that you know, reg regularly updated searches and um, immediate incorporation of any significant evidence and communication of these changes um, that have happened in the review as well. And um, one of the reasons why living reviews have, have gathered so much attention um, and, and you know, researchers are interested in them is because systematic reviews have been, you know, they've, they've long been considered a gold standard of evidence syntheses, but they've been criticised for being at risk of being out of date pretty much the moment they are published. And living reviews address this issue because of this constant updating. And there's, um, there's a slide that um, <laughs> I should have been on for, for that, but um, uh, yeah, you, you can see the points from there. Okay, so one of the things with um, living reviews is that they have been technically challenging until recent years, um, but developments in machine learning have been incorporated into evidence synthesis methodologies, and these semi-automate the screening stage, can save time and potentially contribute to minimising bias and facilitating the possibility of, of living reviews. Um, the screening process is often one of the most time consuming aspects of the review, and these emerging semi-automated tools help to speed up this stage of the review. Um, there's also some exploration about by some about um, these, these screening tools or semi-automated screening tools as being potential reviewers, um, a, as in taking the role of the second human reviewer. So ena potentially enabling single human reviewers um, who co-screen with, with a machine. Um, of course, whether the tool minimizes or introduces bias will depend on how it is developed and trained. Um, and really the impact of AI and screening is really just beginning to be explored. And whilst there's a way to go for now, automated screening may allow for broader and more easily developed searches. Um, but just, just on the search as well, um, a good search of the basis of screening is still critical because as, as we know, garbage in equals garbage out, uh, regardless of how good the tool is. But also the search needs to be good enough um, because you can't screen what you haven't found in the first place. So um, the Living Knowledge System. So since early 2020, Deakin's Applied Artificial Intelligence Institute, um, otherwise known as A squared I squared, and the Centre for Social and Early, Early Emotional Development, otherwise known as SEED, have been developing the Living Knowledge System as a tool to enable semi-automated screening with publication of uh, evidence syntheses on um, the SEED pod portal, which is um, a, a website which brings all of this together. Um, so the, the seed pod um, basically is designed to help both researchers and practitioners to answer their practical questions. So it's, it's really an, a, a point of need resource. Um, Professor Craig Olson first, first shared the ideas behind the Living Knowledge System at the Research Community Support Day in 2020, so as, I, as I mentioned earlier. And um, Professor Olson and the seed groups um, area of research focuses on connections between mental health and healthy societies. 
and they recognise the need for evidence-based roadmaps and the living knowledge system for real real-time evidence of interventions and performance indicators um, way back then. Um, and since 2020, um, Professor Olson has been driving the development of, of this customised machine learning screening tool. So it's an automation tool for screening of articles for evidence synthesis, as mentioned. Um, the database searches are developed and run with the results imported into the tool, either in XML or RAS format, so the same format that um, EndNote uses. Um, and then the tools trained on a key set of articles with human oversight. And much of this early work occurred during the lockdown periods, including recruitment of users beyond health to test the tool beyond their own, for, for their own discipline areas. And you can see, um, see the time frame that um, of, of certain key points that I've got on the slide here. Okay. Um, the output of the system forms the basis of summaries for evidence, which are curated and made available for practitioners on the CPOP website, as I mentioned earlier. And over the past couple of years, the LKS has progressed from a concept to a tool that's currently being actively used for reviews. And just an, a note on the name, it, it is a working title and a new name and branding is in the works. So the library's role in the living knowledge system. We are what Professor Craig Olson would like to often refer to as the human in the machine. Um, and library services make a significant contribution um, as, as humans, as um, um, make, uh, yeah, as humans in the, humans in the machine. Um, over the years, we've had several team members contribute to the project, both from the research and health liaison teams. Um, these teams have, have now actually been changed because we had a restructure at the end of last year. Um, and so, and, and we've also had some staff, staff turnover. Um, so my role, as I mentioned, is, is new and I now attend the fortnightly seed and um, LKS meetings to help provide some advice. Our role tends to uh, um, extend from advice around copyright and licensing and database technical features, best practice in searching, but also we will connect to other experts when we reach the edges of our own expertise. So there's ongoing opportunity for involvement and it's been an excellent opportunity for library staff to explore automation tools and to act as consultants. So current conversations are a continuing exploration around technical capabilities of auto alerts and licensing and copyright. And also um, we had the opportunity to co-write a paper with, with um, a couple of the academics on our experiences in supporting the project. And this has significant benefits to us in reflecting on the changes in technologies, possible future implications on searching, and our roles as, as well as providing experience in writing a research and practice paper and learning from researchers. But I'm sure you're all super keen to see the system itself. So I'm going to hand over to Alan, who will now take you on a practical journey through the LKS, its key capabilities and future directions. Thanks, Fiona. Uh, just share my screen. Everyone see that? Yep, all good. Um, yeah, so as uh, Fiona mentioned, there's been considerable progress um, since we first started in 2020, um, and a, a big um, a big part of that, and a testament to the the team that's been involved in it. Um, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's been a multidisciplinary uh, collaboration, um, mostly done over Zoom calls uh, within lockdown, and it was it was quite a, a nice, bright, shiny um, time of the week for each of us to jump on on board and and get excited about things. Um, so yeah, it's been a, a long journey, but you know, we've come a significant way since. Um, so at this stage, the key capabilities of the system uh, um, has a, a, essentially an end-to-end -end workflow for, um, for SLRs, or systematic literature reviews. Um, so similar uh, to Covidence, if you're familiar with um, a lot of the functions of, of Covidence. Um, we, uh, our sort of um, key point of difference, um, which we've been developing for a couple of years is a machine learning based uh, relevance ranking for publications, which learns from uh, the screening choices and, and patterns of um, the, the reviewers. Uh, along with that, we've got a forecasting function for determining the likely uh, number of remaining relevant references um, and a, a stopping criteria, which helps to uh, confidently stop um, without having to screen the entire set um, of, of publications. So that 
that in itself um, solves a considerable amount of time. Uh, so on the order of months, depending on the, the size of your review. Um, we've got automated duplicate detection and resolution, uh, and we've just recently added support for publishing living review updates. Uh, thus far, we've used it for about 10 reviews at Deakin Uni, um, and we've got some really great feedback from um, users who have been involved in that. It's really been a co-design effort um, from uh, our active users and the core team since the beginning. So we've got something that really sort of reflects um, how people uh, want to use it and, and the, the kind of concerns they have when doing the reviews. Um, <clears throat> we've uh, supported the uh, launch of the SeedPod website, uh, which is currently going through uh, an update and um, the yeah, sort of new um, new set of uh, inclusion items for um, what's published. So that's that's exciting to be at the stage to support that that transition. Uh, we've got active collab collaborations with both uh, MCRI and the Paul Ramsey Foundation. Uh, we're doing multiple reviews with us, and we've also had significant interest, uh, interest from various government organisations, so Department of Veteran Affairs, uh, New South Wales State Government. Uh, so I'm going to cut across to uh, a demo. Um, I'm mindful of time, so I'll just kind of give you the highlights. So uh, I've jumped onto the title and abstract screening, so start page here, and you can see that there's a considerable amount of information about your progression through the uh, title and abstract screening progress. Um, so basically this is the kind of homepage for the screening uh, step for the, uh, in, in this case, it's the seed pod review um, to, to sort of illustrate um, how that would look for a real review. Uh, so basically we've got uh, the forecast for how many things uh, we think are remaining relevant from the full set. Uh, as you can see up here, there's a set of 25,000 uh, references and so far um, yeah, about four and a half thousand uh, have been screened. Uh, of that set we've got a total relevant of just over a thousand. Um, so essentially the, the aim is to screen probably about 100 to 150 more uh, and the way that the system uh, sort of alerts you to stop screening is to um, use both a threshold for um, the lowest confidence um, reference that it still has uh, and a, a streak um, of, of uh, not relevant references. So we've uh, provided a chart here to sort of um, give a bit of a breakdown of that. So yeah, you can see the stats here. There's maybe a few that could be relevant, um, but yeah, well, the large number, the machine learning models determined are very likely not relevant. Um, so if you imagine the amount of time um, that would go into screening that full 25,000, we're looking at screening sort of, you know, another couple hundred more. Um, that's that's quite a significant time saving. Um, beyond that, um, you can jump into the screening interface. Um, so basically, we've got the list of references that are in your backlog to screen here. Uh, you can vote on uh, whether to in include them or not. Um, you can also uh, jump into a more focused uh, scanning view, which can be quite helpful. Um, and yeah, there's uh, ability to comment and tag on. Um, the references for organization and communication amongst the team. Um, I'll just skip into the next step. So, uh, yeah, we've got full text review uh, feature as well. Um, so quite similar um, from a workflow perspective to the, the screening step. Um, a data extraction capability. Um, so yeah, you can go through different references, um, pull out the different points of data. Uh, we think there's um, considerable uh, yeah, potential for automation of being able to pull out some of this data um, from the papers, which I'll, I'll touch on um, a little bit, a bit later in the presentation. Um, and I just wanted to show sort of the, uh, the living review function that we got at the moment. So um, basically I've got this revisions tab, um, which is used to list the, um, the an uh, initial version and, and the updates um, that happened to this review as a living review. Um, so the idea is that um, when you actually go to publish, uh, you can indicate um, either that you um, had you know looked at the available evidence, um, found found no evidence, and um, you know you wanted to communicate that as a 
a sort of scheduled um, activity um, in keeping the review up to date. Uh, or you can either choose to say that you found um, evidence that, that had no significant impact um, or that the yeah, impact on new evidence has been found. Um, and the idea there is to sort of keep record and communicate to, um, you know, a, a broader audience potentially that, um, yeah, the, the literature is, is shifting um, in relation to review and the outcomes have changed from that. Um, so the idea uh, going forward is that we want to connect this um, directly to the uh, the CPOD website so that essentially um, the review step um, happens kind of in step with the, the publishing uh, part. So that's, that's certainly on the horizon for us. Right. I'm conscious of time here. Um, so I'll see if I can quickly skip through the remaining slides. So, uh, yeah, we want to continue to um, support uh, living ed evidence synthesis, um, essentially by providing considerable insights into like the nature of what's changed um, between revisions of review. Uh, so visualizations and kind of historical views of uh, the literature shifts. Uh, beyond that, um, we also see yeah, considerable opportunity to uh, improve the automation uh, of the system to continue to speed things up. Uh, we've also uh, got a few items on the list um, that uh, harness the, the power of generative AI. And um, this is a, a point of consideration uh, for us at the moment um, in terms of yeah, the legalities and, and uh, copyright considerations when you know um, taking text that might be related to the, the article um, and, and what happens to that. Um, so certainly an interesting time to be um, yeah, considering all that stuff. Um, but yeah, just a, a huge thanks to the team uh, who's been involved in this. It's, it's been a, a massive effort um, and a lot of really strong contributions from everyone involved. And that's it. Thanks, Fiona and Alan. That's absolutely fascinating project. I yeah, can't wait to sort of read more about it. And Fiona, you mentioned that uh, there was paper published by the the library team. Maybe you could share a link to that. That might have some really thinking. Yeah, yeah, that might have some great stuff that our audience would be really yeah. interested in. Yeah. Um, so I don't have any questions in the pod at the moment, and 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 looking at our time, we might need to move along. But if you have any questions for Fiona and Alan, please feel free to put them in the in the Q and A, and and they'll be sticking around, um, and we'll be able to type some answers in there for you too. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic and really great. Um, I think for our kind of community to see this update after having um, Craig's presentation at uh, our last in person RSC day a few years ago. It's really yeah, really really fantastic. Ooh, we have a quick question. I might just be able to squeeze this one in. Um, do you have a dedicated team of librarians developing search strategies? Ah, that's that's an excellent question. Um, so we, as I mentioned in the talk, we've, we've recently had a restructure. So a number of us are in, in, in new roles. And my, my role is brand, brand spanking new as of um, December, November last year. So... The short answer to that is no, but we do have services. Um, so we've, we've had a mediated search service that we've developed over the last couple of years, um, but it's not a dedicated team. So the current scholarly services librarians and, um, and my role as well have been involved in developing some search strategies for researchers more recently. 